and I would have messed it up. <laughs> okay, I'll try to watch to see if sex comes on. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, today our topic is God is an artist. You ever think of God being an artist? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Okay, good job. Uh, your quarterly's lead in article tells about a high level executive who, when COVID hit the country, uh, he struggled at work. He had to uh, cut in the budget. He had to move employees around. He had to uh, have extended layoffs. And he hated what he was trying to do, but he knew it was necessary to keep the company afloat. And he found himself often at work picking up some of the slack of the empty spots. Anyway, he just couldn't separate the pain of work and his home life. And he got very deeply depressed. And he pushed away his wife and his five-year-old daughter. And in fact, he just walled himself off in his den in the evenings. Well, one evening, his little daughter boldly crashed into the room, his sanctuary, and jumped into her dad's lap, threw her arms around him, squeezed as tight as she could, and he loosened one of her arms and he said, honey, you're hugging me to death. And she says, no, daddy, I'm hugging you to love. <laughs> and I thought that was the sweetest story. Uh, there are lots of ways to be dead spiritually or emotionally while still being alive physically. But because of God's great love for us, God in his mercy made us alive when we were dead in our transgressions. Uh, the first question in your quarterly is, what are some of the ways we can be dead spiritually or emotionally while still being alive physically? Great depression. Depression? Being selfish. Being selfish. Under so much stress, sometimes you just get a little lost. Yeah, stress brings us down, doesn't it, Geraldine? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and sometimes it helps to count our blessings, doesn't it? To think okay. about, you know, things are bad, but I have these things to be thankful for. Yes. And, and it's important that even in those times that we stay connected with God, that we work on that relationship with him, that we seek him in prayer, that we read his word and hear him speak to us. And it's hard to do that when you're terribly depressed, but it's necessary. How would you describe being spiritually dead? Not listening to God. Not being tuned in to God. Yeah. And all his goodness that is directed our way. Well, how would you describe being spiritually alive? Much, much better. <laughs> much, much better. Yeah. Yes. Being grateful for every everything every day. An attitude of praise, yes. Yes. Um, and of course being connected with God and doing the things we know we should be about. Well, my teacher's quarterly uh, author tells a, a nice little story I wanted to share. He and his brothers frequently got together at a restaurant for breakfast. And there was one brother who just couldn't sit still a long time. And, and a lot of them like to talk and you know really enjoy one another. Well, he was often the first to leave, but whenever he left early, he would stop and pay the entire tab for the whole table. And my author says, uh, when, when I walk by the cashier, I smile and say, he paid for me. And when it comes to eternal life, he says, I can also say, he paid for me. My heavenly father generously paid my entire bill. And I'm so grateful. And I think we each one could say that today. And today we're going to learn about God's amazing love for us. Um, we, it's, it's 
displayed in Jesus Christ, we might say. And the difference between my brother paying for my breakfast and God paying for our sin is we had the money. But we'll never have enough money or deeds to pay our sin debt. It's just impossible. And God in his mercy and his grace paid that for us through his son's sacrifice. We just can't earn it. Well, how can we respond to our Heavenly Father who gives us such a gift? When by faith we accept God's gracious gift of salvation, we become a new creature. We have been recreated to do the good works God has prepared for us in advance, which will appear in our scripture. And our master artist has equipped us to serve him and others for his glory. And so we just pray that we are faithful to do that. Our scripture is all from the second chapter of Ephesians. We have 10 verses in three sections. So it's little readings today. And not, not, no awful names. So I know there'll be a lot of volunteers to read. <laughs> the first section is one through three. If I can have a reader, please. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thought. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Thank you, Merlin. Uh, verse 1 states, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, and seen from the perspective of new life in Christ, the previous world in which we lived was dominated by death and sin. And transgressions and sins are not merely our own evil actions, but the effect of living in a realm that has worldly values and assumptions prevail. And the Bible does not teach, this kind of surprised me, that death is the cessation uh, of the existence. The Bible does not say that. Rather, death is a separation. Physical death is the separation of this person's spirit from the body. Spiritual death is a separation of person's spirit from the Lord. And when God told Adam, when they were in the Garden of Eden all that long, long time ago. You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in that day you shall die. It was not a reference to a spiritual death. We know from Scripture that Adam lived to 930 years old. However, they ate of the tree of knowledge, and they died spiritually on the spot. They were dead in their sin. In verse 2, it says, the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and that can be explained this way. Paul understood that the demonic forces were located in the air, in the realm between earth and heaven, so in this space, but separating us from God. We might today use the term evil in the world or the devil in the world. In verse 3, it says, all of us at one time followed the ways of this world. And that referred to the situation of when he says all, the Jew and the Gentile. And Paul includes himself in this. He knows his situation before he met God on the road. And in the natural human situation, apart from the grace of God, both desires and thoughts are corrupt. And then in verse, uh, these first verses, these first three verses, the whole person is seen as disobedient, oriented to self, rather than to the creator. Well, in what way are lost people, those without Christ, dead? You know, we don't have the grace of God. We're separated from the Lord spiritually, aren't they? Unaware of how God is truly working in their lives. And question five, in what manner do lost people walk or conduct themselves? Crazy. Crazy down here? <laughs> Crazy ways. You know, this lady, and this just happened a few weeks ago, 
this she she told this woman now why she didn't tell the man that he come to her house she was gonna get her and the man if she lived he lived in Grandview she followed him out there and he left she went and knocked on the woman's door and he killed her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now how sick is that yes it is you know that just don't make sense no it doesn't Okay. Any but, other thoughts? But don't you know some people who probably haven't accepted Christ or who but still seem to live a very good life, very good person, mm -hmm. very, you know, very good people. And um so I, I mean I know the lesson, of course, is you know, all these people that aren't in Christ and you know they're terrible, wicked people, but I don't think that's necessarily true. They're spiritually dead. They are spiritually yeah. dead. Yeah, that's certainly true. Yeah. Now, I I have known people that really live a good life and do things for other people, but yet they didn't believe in God. Yeah. And they're lost. And uh, those are the people we need to somehow reach. I suspect. Question six says: As a result, what end do lost people face? Hell and with the devil. Separation from God. Eternal separation. Okay. And the loss of eternal life, too. Okay. So separation from God. Okay. Let's hear verses four through seven of somebody who would read those. But because of the of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, <clears throat> even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. The God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Thank you, May. In <clears throat> verse 4 it says, But God in his great love for us, and that when sinful beings could not do anything to attain the life for which they were striving, the initiative came from God, you see here, entirely as a matter of divine love and mercy. God is rich in mercy. And it, the best earthly comparison, reportedly told me, is a real good grandparent. And I, of course, being a grandparent, my great grandparent, I like that comparison. Um, this is because grandma's always thinking about her grands and uh, wherever she is picking up trinkets or if she's close, she'll stop in or she's calling or, you know, just really keeping up on them. And grandpa, he often is uh, going out of his way to make things that will delight them. And grandpa's always pretty physically active with the kids, tossing them around and just enjoying them and having a good time, giving them their love and their attention and said in the same way God is that interested and involved in each one of us it's just his nature and God wouldn't dream of not going out of his way for us and we must remember nothing is impossible for God verse 5 says God raised us up in Christ so even as we walk this earth and we face the challenges that come to each of our lives. Our spiritual position is in the heavenly realm where we are seated with Christ. Verse 7 says, in coming ages, the future dimension of salvation is not lacking in the book of Ephesians, but it is subordinated to the present reality. Christians are already chosen and incorporated into the body of Christ. Sharing in his resurrection life of the age to come. And the existence of the church is a testimony to God's grace through the ages. We can look back on more than 19 centuries of church history as Christian testimony to God's grace. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> 19 centuries of church history. Question seven asks, how does God demonstrate his rich mercy towards sinners? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That was the first step, wasn't it? 
forgiveness. And acceptance into his kingdom. Acceptance yeah. into his kingdom and grace. Yeah. And where are God's people seated in this scripture? At his right hand. At his right hand, that's good. In the realms of the Savior. Yeah. And what is our future hope? We are there too. Yeah. Everlasting life. Yes. Joy and heaven. No matter how bad times <laughs> we remember our future hope. God is in control. And the Lord's return is promised. Our eternal life is promised. And we know our God is a promise keeper. <clears throat> Verse 8 starts by saying, I said, oops, that's not been read. Let's hear scripture 8 through 10 verses. <clears throat> For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you, Cheryl. <clears throat> so verse 8 starts by saying, by grace you have been saved through faith. And immediately reminds us, this isn't your doing. There's nothing we can have or achieve for ourselves it is the gift of God. Our first 10 says, <clears throat> we are what he made us. When I went to study my lesson this week, went to grab my William Barclay commentary, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I knew <laughs> where I had last had it, and I thought I had left it right there because I knew we were teaching Ephesians all month. And it was nowhere to be found. So I went to my Fred Craddock commentary of the New Testament. And I know some of you surely know who Fred Craddock is, but he is Disciples Denomination's uh, greatest, I guess, preacher and scholar. And uh, I heard him several times. I bet you have, Joyce. I know he was a community Christian several times. But he, he was known especially for the wonderful stories he taught in his uh, preaching. But uh, he, he came to Kansas City a lot. He was from a southern state. I don't know, maybe. I don't think it was Virginia. Maybe it was one of the Carolinas. But um, a great, great uh, preacher in our denomination. But this is the way he put it. And I thought it was kind of neat. He says, literally, we are God's poem. Have you thought of yourself as a poem? God's own creative composition. That kind of made sense to me. God created us and made us. And, uh, and then Paul tells us that we have been cre created in the Lord Jesus Christ for good works. And uh, Paul doesn't mean once you're saved, you know, you're saved by grace. Once you're saved, he doesn't mean that's it. Go back your life the way you've been living. He means it's a good start, but there's something you've been saved for. And he goes on to tell us good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That kind of blows my mind. I don't know about the rest of you. Because I always think of those happening in an instance when you have an opportunity to do something. Or someone, but it tells us God planned for that for us. And we know good works don't earn our faith. They're simply a thanksgiving gift to God for His incomparable love. But they're also part of God's plan for us, most importantly. Remember, good works are simply God working in us. Question 10 asks. How are people saved from sin? Repent. Repent. Repent, be forgiven, and accept by faith. And from our passage, what does not save people from sin? Works. Works, absolutely. I think we all understand that. We've had that over the year, many years many times. And where do good works come in as far as believers are concerned? 
something you're supposed to do. Yeah. Something that God plans for you to do. We were created and saved to do the good works. And other people are watching and they see it. It's a good witness, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, it just being on your heart. You know, when you you know you see things you, you that's not right, you just feel like you just have to do it. You know, mm -hmm. people just some people are just hurting and they really need the help. Yeah, that's true. Well, the last section in your quarterly reminds us God saved us and cultivates in us a character that seeks to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And basically, God invites us to partner with Him. In loving people and creating things that bring joy and beauty and love and well being to others. The key to sensing God's invitation is to respond to each little nudge from God. Have you ever felt a nudge from God? Yep. I'm sure yeah. everybody a has of a nudge of some kind. And uh, it, it may be. And nudge to make a phone call, to send a card, to make an encouraging remark to someone. And the more we, <clears throat> I'm having trouble keeping my voice, the more we respond to the nudges, it seems like even the more nudges we'll get. But uh, coming from a scouting family, I was again reminded of one of scouting's principles do a good turn daily. And I thought, you know, that wouldn't be a bad principle for a Christian. You know, do some, do one thing each day for someone else. And even when we're physically limited by what we can do, there are phone calls we can make, cards we can send, prayers we can offer. There are ways that we can increase the joy in someone else's life. Um, question 13 how can Satan keep people muddled in entitlement and self focus he's always at work isn't he his worldly attractions with yeah trying to lure us you know not do what we think we should but something that might be fun or something like that that we've been wanting to do <clears throat> Question 14 asks, what helps people stay focused on what God is doing in them and the people around them? What keeps us focused? Uh, God keeps us focused uh, <laughs> uh, with a conquering faith. Okay. And, and, and strength for free will and, and strength for free mind. Okay. God gives us some things to count on mm -hmm. that we can use, okay. And uh, 14, let's see. That was, that was 14, right? Yeah. Okay, 15. When have you had a sense that God was leading you to do something? Anybody had that sense? Okay. I'm sure that most of you have, and I, and I have a feeling that most of you did it. I think I think this is a wonderful class. Um, it's, I think you're all very active and just, you're special. Just special to me. Let's go to God in prayer. Before we close mm -hmm. in prayer, I just want to remind everybody of the all church uh, potluck today, right after class and probably 10 minutes or so later for the service to get over. But hope that everybody can be there because it's kind of a, um, you know, an opportunity to get ideas out there and to brainstorm about what we want to do in the future for the church. So it's important for people to be there to share your ideas and to hear what you have to say. If you didn't bring food, I brought enough to feed an army. So <laughs> you just be my guest. And that was offered from the pulpit too. That, yeah, it's uh, funny if anybody can. Stay even if I would like to share something. All right. Um, the people that came to our home during all this were sharing. So many of them were Christians. There was a young man who couldn't speak very good English. He was from another country. 
and he handed me a track every time he brought equipment to the house. And he brought equipment a lot. <laughs> um, I finally told him, he gave me one that's real shiny and nice for a bookmark, and it's called The Bridge. And I said, we're Christians. And he said, good. But, you know, and, and of course you expect it from hospice people, but may, a young man delivering equipment. My guy, young man who mows my yard. It was his father that started mowing and he passed it to him. And he, he was mowing my yard the last time and he, he said, come here, I need to pray for you. And he's only maybe 25. <laughs> that guy prayed a prayer that was incredible. And he asked that in his turmoil that I was in with Alan, that somehow we would find the love that we had had when we got married. And um, it was just one thing after the other. Um, and I have to tell you, this is kind of funny. Um, Social Security thought I was dead. <laughs> my uh, investment company Edward Jones got notice from their their main office that I had passed away oh, well they got it their signals crossed I had brought in a death certificate social security oh, two weeks ago I me mean, Tuesday and the next day they told they said you got to bring your marriage certificate because and so I brought the marriage certificate and when they scanned it they scanned it to my social security number so that's how they thought I was dead <laughs> anyway I had a Dickens of a time to prove I was alive <laughs> social security and and you know I walked in the door and there's a man oh he's sitting I've seen him several times now and he, I told him what happened, and he just rolled his eyes and shook his head. <laughs> like, what in the world? But um, anyway, I'm okay. I'm alive, and Social Security realizes it, too. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just been so many things that have happened. And I know I told, shared with you that I thought Ellen was hallucinating. You saw, it was up in the corner of our bedroom. You saw people sitting in rows. And kept asking me, don't you see those people up there? They're just sitting there and they're watching. I said, no, I don't see them. And I said, I think your brain's playing tricks on you. Well, yesterday, not yesterday, Friday, I had a clock delivered. It had been work gone for four months being worked on. And the man and his wife came to deliver it. And I told her this about Alan seeing me people and she says oh they were there they were watching and waiting with him but he kept seeing them and he told me they're mostly children and of course I couldn't and they were by that's where our door is to our bedroom so that's why he's pointing over there I just want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt heaven is real yes. and be yes. ready for it yes. be yes. ready for it because Alan was getting himself ready the last week. And, uh, you know, there were times in our earlier in our married life when I'd ask, he'd say, I hope I'm going to heaven. I said, oh, you can know. And I, I prayed the prayer of salvation with him when he was, you know, in his 80s. Here he's been in the church all that time and never felt confident that he was going to go to heaven. But boy, he sure knew it. The last couple of days there, he was just pleading with God to take him home. And um, I finally, I was praying for him. I said, Lord, give him your peace, not the world's peace, your peace. And um, and I also told him that it was okay to go. And my youngest daughter said, when you said that, Mom, he just relaxed. Hmm. And I've seen people struggle to live. I've watched lots of people die, never my husband till now but he just ceased his heart stopped he stopped breathing at the same time yes. and she also my youngest daughter was there it was halloween night and you imagine she's passing out candy at the door and uh, she, but she was in the room off and on and she said that my dad was there my dad's been dead for eight years and he was a retired minister and she said he was waiting for him. 
Thank you. He was waiting for him. And when he died, he opened his arms to him. Now my daughter saw, and I believe her, she sees things I don't see. And, uh, you know, I'm this factual kind of person. I couldn't even believe that Alan was seeing people up in the corner of the room. <laughs> so be aware that the spiritual realm is there. Yeah. Heaven is real. Yeah. You can know that you're going to heaven. It isn't a, well, I hope I'm good enough. No. no. It's nothing on us. Like our lesson said, it's not of works. Not of works. And the Bible says that in, you know, in James 2, not of works. Unless any man should boast. We cannot get into heaven on our own. But I know where Ellen is. Amen. Oh, Amen. Praise God. Gosh, you know, uh, when my mother passed away, my daughter said this. I didn't remember hearing this, but that when someone goes to heaven, the angels ring a bell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said, did you hear the bell? I did. She mm. did. Mm. So my youngest daughter is... Um, Amen. She said also my dad brought him to the funeral because Alan wanted to see what and he was pleased. They were just, she said they were just there for a brief minute. I asked her, well, by any chance, you know what Alan was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have much on. I'm never <laughs> and he said, well, it didn't make him much of an impression, but she said, I think it's just pants and a shirt. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> normal dress yeah <laughs> so yes our bodies and our spirits are separated right now they will be rejoined but still those that have died in christ are with him spiritually amen amen you sleep, amen. sleep in christ sleep in christ yeah. Yeah. thank you for that that was beautiful, that was yeah. beautiful. i just could not sit here even though i knew i was going to cry and Alan hated it when I cried. <laughs> he says, Why do women always have to cross? <laughs> um, also, I'd like to um, thank everyone for the get well card. Um, it was very nice. And You're getting it. along okay? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, well, let's go to our Lord in prayer. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father. We know that we are your handiwork and that you have plans for us to do good works for you, although they don't save us, but things for us to do that improve the lives of others. Teach us to be tuned in to other people's needs when you nudge us. Help us to be willing to maybe... Um, sacrifice a little time or inconvenience in order to meet that need. And Father, we just lift to you those that we have talked about this day. We lift our dear and Dave and then Nita Lord, and mm -hmm. struggling with fever and cold symptoms and quite a long time, Lord, and feeling pretty rough. Just pray that they'll soon feel better and be out and about and back with us. Father, we just lift David Faust, who's in the hospital, and Donna, who's at his side most of the time. And we just pray your blessing on them, Lord, and that they will be able to come home soon and uh, his health be a little better than when he went in. Father, we just lift the family of Ellen Durbin and uh, hold them in their care they suffer the loss. Father, we lift to you Karen Curtis's brother, who just recently got a, a cancer diagnosis, Lord, something none of us like to hear. Mm. But Lord, we just ask that uh, he'll get the treatment that he needs. And Father, we just lift to you her mother. She also asked for prayer for her. Father, we lift to you Janelle's sister and brother-in-law, who are dealing with COVID as the third time, Lord, just help that to pass quickly for them, Lord, no lasting effects. And Father, we rejoice with Brenda, for, with Geraldine for Brenda, uh, the fact that she will be moving up near her mom to be of help, Lord. How wonderful that is 
We just praise you. Father, we think of all those who will be traveling this holiday weekend. And we just pray that travel mercies on each one. Lord, help them to arrive safely at their destinations. Father, we lift May's friend, Laura, who is uh, suffering with colon cancer. Lord, and we just lift her to you for your healing touch. And Father, we just rejoice with Jacob as he has uh, been accepted at Rockhurst, Lord, to finish his schooling. And we just ask your blessing on him and that undertaking, Lord. Father, we lift artists as brother in law Jimmy to you for your loving hand. And Lord, we think of Sue as Bambini as she's traveling um, this Thanksgiving, especially, Lord, and help her to have a good time with her boys and uh, enjoy it and be safe both ways, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you for your loving care of each one of us, Lord. You are so good. We are so grateful. You just almost know our need before we do, Lord. We feel so blessed, so loved, and you're just awesome. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Joanne. Nice lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.